You're looking at one of America's true green cards, the legendary Ford Mustang. Every 90 seconds, a new Mustang hits the road with a gleaming finish, perfectly fitted parts. But very few people know what it takes to bring a car to life, to build a real Mustang. It happens here at the giant Rouge complex in Dearborn, Michigan, where the Mustang assembly plant is located. Before a Mustang is driven off the assembly line, it will travel nine miles, be welded over 2,000 times, be stamped, dipped, sprayed, baked, and finally, it's ready to go. Introducing How a Car is Built, the inside story of the manufacture of the Ford Mustang. Every Mustang begins with a truck, a 42-wheeler that delivers the first crucial ingredient. Spools of precious draw quality steel weighing up to 30 tons each. Enough steel to supply stamped parts for 30 new Mustangs. One ton per car. This looks like a lot of steel. But remember, they assemble over 600 Mustangs every day. Now the job is to move this giant spool of steel to where it can be cut to a manageable size. Obviously, it takes a pretty powerful mechanism for doing it. This 30-ton capacity remote control crane. The spool of steel is moved along in the plant, slowly, very carefully. Looks easy, doesn't it? Unrolls like a paper towel. The first stop is the cutting machine, where the giant roll is cut into pieces that will fit the stamping machines. The stacked cut steel is picked up by powerful suction cups. This is the first step of the stamping process, where the piece starts to take on a personality all its own. The huge stamping presses exert enough crushing power to make a refrigerator as flat as a pancake. The steel then moves to the second step, where the excess metal is cut away. Sort of like cutting cookie dough with a cookie cutter. There's another piece right behind it, remember. Every 90 seconds, a new Mustang. This stamping press will turn out the same piece for hours. Then the die will be changed and a different piece stamped out. Finally, after being cut and trimmed by four different dies, the piece is ready for the next step. Maybe you can see that this stamped piece is the right rear quarter panel of a Mustang coupe. As the parts are prepared for the main assembly line, there's also welding to be done. It takes teamwork. The parts are set up by hand, and robots do the welding. The task here is to put together the right rear fender of a Mustang convertible. Like streams flowing into a main river, parts continuously arrive at their designated stations. This is the true headwater of the assembly line, where it all begins to come together. In 22 hours, after traveling nine miles down this line, it will be a completed Mustang. The idea is hardly new. Here's the man who started it all, seen putting the vehicle identification number on the first Model A engine. Henry Ford was the first to capitalize on the idea of using an assembly line to build cars. 
There were no suction cups or robots to move the parts. It was all done by hand. One job done over and over at a station, while the cars move along. In those days, the body of the car was fitted over the chassis and the rest of the drivetrain. Today, that process is reversed, as you'll see later. The engine and transmission are added from under the car. Back to today's assembly plant, where people and robots work side by side. The body of the Mustang is welded together from a number of stamped sections, creating a unitized body. Like with an airplane, there's no need for a separate frame to provide strength in this kind of construction. The first part is the center section of the floor pan, which serves as the floor of the passenger compartment. Note the space for the drive shaft. This is the rear section of the floor pan for the car's trunk with the well for the spare tire. And here is the front section of the floor pan for the car's engine and transmission. These robots look an awful lot like dinosaurs. But no carnivores here. They're really quite easy to work with. There they go. The front section is now complete. Now the three sections of the floor pan are placed together. And here it is. You're looking at a new Ford Mustang. Well, the bottom part anyway. This is not the Arctic version of a new Mustang. It's merely the way they move the car along as they're assembled. Sleds over rollers and belts. There are 2,007 weld spots on the new Mustang. I'm making the lower back for the car. In a minute, you're going to see this part again. Here is where the side section of the car is added. You can see this is a coupe. Remember the woman's lower back piece? There it is. They even use a hammer now and then in this robotic age. Once again, more welding. Incredibly precise. It has to be. Appearances may be deceiving. The Mustang body has to go through a check before it goes any further. 
we have uh, processes that build the car, uh, and we do use uh, different procedures. Perceptron has uh, 44 cameras uh, that have laser beams that look at surfaces and look at the areas that we want to have measured. They uh, look at the location where they're at, and if we see that's okay, then we decided the, the part or the body is in the proper position. Now the gas cap lid is at. Some more heavy duty welding. Sparks fly, smoke billows. It's like a sound and light show in this part of the assembly line. At every stage of the line, safety is crucial. Protective gear is worn. Gloves, helmets, ear covers. Now the car continues on its nine mile journey along the line. More parts arrive, doors. The doors have been pre-assembled and brought to the main assembly line. By precise logistical planning, all arrive on time. It's quite a feat. Depending on the part, Ford only keeps a five hour to three day supply on hand. Nothing collects dust around here. A very precise machine fits the door. They call it setting the door. Cars aren't the only things moving along at a frantic pace. This woman keeps in pretty good shape. Now the rear deck fixture is added. This is the deck fixture. And what I'm doing is I'm tightening bolts on the left hand side of the deck to ensure a proper fit. The hood is not made out of steel, it's plastic. The reduced weight helps improve gas mileage. This monster setter machine is used to align the hood. Then bolts are added. It's checked out. Today's cars aren't just tested on the track. They're also put through rigorous crash testing. Now the Mustangs are moving up in the world to the second and third stories of the factory. The factory itself is only a mile long, so the nine mile long assembly line follows a serpentine path through three floors. The cars are on their way to the paint shop. First, some prep work is done. And then they're ready for what they call the E-coat. It's put on electrostatically, which means the paint is literally attracted to the metal, like a magnet. So this is a dangerous area. It protects the metal against rust and corrosion.
Caulking is done to seal every nook and cranny before the base paint is applied. Sealing the joint. Prevent leaking. The caulking is done by hand, just like you do on the tile in your bathroom. Now the car has to be polished with extreme care in preparation for the paint job. Those hats are to make sure not one stray hair lands on the surface. They use a compressor gun to blow away any loose dust. This computer orchestrates the painting of the car. It's programmed to spray on the appropriate color at the right time. Ford offers a rainbow of different colors, including three different reds. The paint is sprayed on evenly using a precision piece of machinery. These are called bell cups. The paint comes through the back of these, comes out of the center, it swirls the paint around, puts it on consistently. These serrated edges allow the paint to be broken up to give you a smooth, even coat. The most popular color for the Mustang is red. The same bell cups are used for each of the car's 11 different colors. They're cleaned out automatically in seconds between cars. And then they're ready to spray the next color. Now the clear coat that really brings out the true iridescence of the color. The entire painting process takes three hours and involves three different baking processes. The car is going into the final bake in an oven that reaches 280 degrees. The car is going into the final bake in an oven that reaches 280 degrees. It looks great to us, but the paint expert always has the last word. I'm checking for the color code to make sure the color is, is proper. This, you see, but this is the line I'm tagging here. This tells you everything that goes into the car. So when you see me reading this, I'm reading the color code, what kind it is, GT. And, and making sure that the paint color is proper. Oh yes, that's going, that's ready to be sold. The cars made considerable progress from the rolls of steel you saw earlier. This is the convertible model. Those are the seat belts being attached directly to the frame. Now the sun visors. With a compressed air wrench, it's pretty easy to twist those screws in. Convertibles are put together on a special sub-assembly line. The installation of the top used to be farmed out. Now Ford does all the work. The convertible has 2,800 parts, 300 more than the coupe, and consequently a higher price. One-third of all Mustangs sold are convertibles. Now the convertibles merge back into the main assembly line, where the windows are added. And here's the machine that's going to help set the glass. It would call a door glass setup. One thing's for certain. If it's a part that opens, closes, or moves in any way, 
There's a machine called a setter that makes sure it fits just right. Everyone has a specific role on the line. Next, the rear taillights are added. This is another sub-assembly, the steering wheel. Dual airbags are standard equipment on every Mustang. Installing the steering wheel and the airbag. You can be sure this steering wheel won't be hanging around here for long. Here it is, at the next station, being added to the dashboard. Uh, installing the steering column. Oh, yes. Steering column installed, yeah. As you can see, it's being installed upside down. Another precision tool that really saves time. The steering wheel and the dashboard are fully assembled outside the car. It should come as no surprise to anyone who's ever tried to work on a dashboard when it's in the car. Ever wonder how they attach the windshield? Can't forget the rear view mirror. They use a super powerful glue. No screws needed here. A very crucial part, the emblem for the Mustang. It conjures images of wild horses galloping freely across the painted desert, capturing the true unbridled spirit of the American West. Well, you get the idea. A very similar likeness to the Ford Mustang logo, wouldn't you say? Wild horses never needed these. The headlights and indicator signals. It makes it look so simple. This warning light signals that the Mustang is about to get a lift. It leaves the sled and will be airborne until the wheels are attached near the end of the line. As mentioned earlier, the manufacturing process is reversed from Henry Ford's day. The power and transmission are installed from below. Mustang engines arrive at the assembly plant from Ohio, Canada, and Mexico, where they're built. Mustang comes with a 3.8 liter V6 and also offers a 5 liter V8 engine for the GT model. Zero to 60 in under seven seconds. Top speed estimated at 140 miles an hour. 
In spite of all the new power, they look remarkably similar to the engines of Henry Ford's day. But today's engine is a lot more efficient. This is a computer simulation of how a modern engine works. Here's the transmission. This five-speed manual is being added to the GT model. Now it's time for the ultimate partnership. When the heart of the Mustang is joined with the body, one couldn't exist without the other. Up it goes. The coil spring for the front suspension. You'd notice if these weren't in the car. They just don't build cars the way they used to. Thank goodness. This is a look at the coil spring and shock assembly in action. The car wouldn't go far without this. The gas tank. This part is the drive shaft that powers the rear wheel drive Mustang. He makes it look easy. The rear axle with differential. A heavy-duty machine lifts it into the car and completes the drivetrain. We're in the home stretch. These wheel rims are made of an aluminum alloy. They're light, yet strong. And now come the tires. In the process that used to be done by hand, it's now all automated and done in seconds. Looks a lot like the luggage bin at the airport. Except this one doesn't keep you waiting. No time to bounce the tires around as they did in this old Mustang commercial. On the assembly line, it's strictly business. It's a lot quicker to slide the wheel on and reach for your handy five-way power tool. One of the last parts on this convertible, the seats are installed. It's done pretty much by hand. There's the compressor wrench. Now enough gas has to be put in the car to drive it away from the assembly line and off to the showroom. Then a few taps with a mallet, and we're almost ready. Here's what the bottom of a Mustang GT looks like. 
There's the dual exhaust system framing the drive shaft. Rear axle. Gas tank. Now comes the crowning finale to all this work. After traveling nine miles down an assembly line, after 22 hours of being meticulously worked over by hundreds of people and robots, after being welded and bonded and sprayed, one last check. Turns the key. Yes! In 90 seconds, there'll be another Mustang. Then another. And another. And Mustang production continues just like it's been doing for over 30 years. <laughs>